Hey folks, David Hubble here. It's September 17th, 2022, and it's the second week of the fall 2022 Meliton season. So let's look around and see what's been going on this week. Hey, before we get started, if you've liked the information you've been seeing on my videos over the last several years, so that you can tell how to, uh, what to look for in your Meliton vines, please subscribe to this channel and also click that bell so you'll be alerted to all the new upcoming Melanchthon videos as well as cooking videos we've been doing. Appreciate it. So this week in Mobile we have been pretty dry. Uh, not a lot has changed on the vine itself. Um, as I mentioned last week what I was going to do is I pulled that vine down off those big bushes because when it starts to fruit and I need to pick them it's going to be a pain. As you can see by pulling back some of this it did damage the vines a bit but there's still a lot of new growth on it here as well. You'll also see that there's still quite a bit of yellowing of the leaves and uh, we've got some insect damage. Uh, nothing that I'm too overly worried about but I want to go ahead and show you uh, what I th uh, was causing it. So it's the first week of the 2022 fall Melanchthon season. So what can you expect? Well, you should be seeing increasing flowering, both from the male and females. Now, despite seeing some early male flowers coming out here, I've noticed that um, also seeing more females, but almost less flowers. I got the clusters. Uh, but they haven't all bloomed yet. So one of the things I noticed from this week is that I've got some of this damage here. This looks to me to be like the uh, little Spanish beetle. I think it's what it's called, it's a Spanish beetle. And it looks like a ladybug. And I had one sitting right here and uh, it moved. But anyway, this is some of the damage that I see from it. I also see this as well, and I'm not sure if people think it's anthracnose or what, but I've noticed on the back, it looks to be like the dried remains of a little caterpillar. These are yellow at one point, the caterpillar. The other thing I noticed, if they're still here, These little pests, little leaf footed uh, stink bugs. I need to grab a little paper towel and just smash them and kill them before they get to become like these two. Here's the little yellow creature I was talking about that causes this damage here. I'll probably also crush it as well. So here is that little beetle I was telling you about, as well as that little caterpillar. You see them both. Well, the beetle dropped off, but anyway, I'm gonna crush these little suckers. But no need to worry, it's not all doom and gloom. Like I said, got a bunch of clusters of these flower buds here, of the males, and in fact, you see one kind of just starting to open up. And as we continue along, if I can get it in focus, we still have some females as well, more and more prominent. So this is what you should be seeing on your Melanchthon vines now or within the next few weeks. Now, as I mentioned last week, since there wasn't a lot of male flowers around, I expected those female flowers to not get pollinated, and this is what happens. They'll basically just shrivel up. So that's what you can notice. That's just normal. There's nothing killing it per se. It just didn't have anything to pollinate it.
So this week what I think I'm going to focus on is some of what I did last week. Maybe try to retrain some of the vine before it puts any fruit on. That way I just give it a chance to make it accessible for myself. Um, I'll probably try to eradicate as many of the pests as possible without using any uh, pesticides. Um, and then I'll keep an eye out for male and female flowers. Like I said, the main thing really is that uh, with them, if you find a male and a female, you can hand pollinate it. If you've got a pretty good bee population, uh, you shouldn't hopefully need to do any of that. But, you know, this is the main time right now just to make sure everything's on track. You know, if you haven't received any water to your vine in, you know, more than a week or so, you might want to give it a little bit, but not too much. If, you get, uh, if you're in a... Uh, raised bed or something you know just check use that soil test we talked about earlier in the year with a stick make sure you just got plenty of moisture if it's good don't do anything but if it's dry you may want to just consider giving a little water to it just enough to perk it up but that's all i plan to do this week uh, like i said hopefully over the course of the week if i see the flowers i should continue to see increased flowering and uh, like I said, keep an eye out, hoping that some of these males should start really just bursting forward. You can see I've got a lot of buds and just a few that I've shown you. And um, despite the early onset, uh, like I said, it still hadn't really come on like I hoped, but that's the things you just need to be watching for. And of course, there's probably some on the places that I can't reach way up there that may be already doing what they need to be doing. Um, we're starting to get into that photoperiodic period. So we're getting less daylight and more night. And so that's helping start these to uh, flower. And hopefully the insects will, the beneficial insects will do what they need to do. Um, and just watch your leaves and uh, just make sure you don't get any infestations of any cabbage loopers or anything else. So that's what we got this week found this information helpful please like and share with your melatonin loving friends also if you find it useful please subscribe to david j hubble's youtube page and uh, and click that bell to be alerted to upcoming posts and check us out on melaton.org m-i-r-l-i-t-o-n.org we are on facebook we also have the website that has been recently revamped by dr lance hill all kind of good useful information and um, we'll see you next week. Thanks again.